one. You look a bit fed up tonight. I am. It's my little brother. He's such a show-off sometimes. Why? What did he do? Well, just because I like drawing, he started drawing as well, copying all my pictures. And now he's ruined all my best pens. I say, Nelson, do you remember the story of Lily the Ostrich and her little brother? I think so. Um, isn't that the one about the egg and the boulders and the raging waterfall? Hold on, hold on. You have to start a story from the beginning. Yeah, and we all have to be sitting comfortably first. Thank you, Giggles and Tickles. I think we're ready now, Georgina. This is the story of Lily's little brother. Every morning, Audrey the Ostrich and her young daughter Lily went out for a walk together. Morning, Audrey. Morning, Lily. Morning. Ah, doesn't Lily look just like her mum? I suppose so. They are both ostriches. Does this flower suit me, Lily? You don't think I'm too old for flowers, do you? No way, Mum. You look great. Hey, we can wear matching flowers. Audrey and Lily did everything together. They really were the best of friends, and it seemed like nothing would ever change. I'm so glad you suggested these palm leaves, dear. They're just perfect. But then, one day, Audrey woke her daughter with a big surprise. Yoo-hoo! Lily! Look what I've got. What? What is it? This is your new brother, dear. Brother? Think what fun you two will have. Yeah, of course we will. We'll have heaps of fun. <laughs> We've got to be very careful, Nettle. Your little brother is precious, you know. Rock-a-bye, baby. When your shell breaks. Is that mum? Because a new flower doesn't look nice. Yes, dear. You look lovely. Mum, it's time for our morning walk. I'm sorry, Petal. Mummy hasn't got time today. But, but we always go for a walk together. Yoo hoo! So, where is the new arrival then? What a little smasher! And he looks just like his mum. Oh. Who wants to see my new dance? Get to sleep. She was still angry because everyone was ignoring her. Silly egg. Nobody asked if I wanted a little brother around the place. Well, I don't. The next morning, Audrey had to go off to get some fresh grass for the nest. Lily, dear, could you look after the egg while I'm gone? Mum, I'd love to hang out with my little brother. We'll have fun together, won't we, bro? Oh, bless. <laughs> right, little bro, you and me are going for a walk. So, you think you can take over? <laughs> we'll see about that.
Audrey. How are you today? Fine, thank you. And how are the children? I think they're going to be really good friends. Lily wanted to hide the egg somewhere where no one would ever find it. You'll be fine. Yoo-hoo, children! Mummy's home! Oh! Lily? Egg? Audrey was very worried. She decided to ask Nelson for help. Attention, everyone! What's wrong? What's happened? Lily and the egg have gone missing! Oh, oh no! Don't panic! Don't panic! We'll send out search parties at once! I'll look to the south! I'll look up north! I'll look in the west! I'll look in the east! Oh, and um, I'll look in the bits that are left over! <laughs> Looking for Audrey's egg. It's gone missing. We're looking for good boulders to bash. Oh, they're hard to find these days. Boulders? Just ignoring Nelson. We'll keep our eyes open for Audrey's egg. Oh, we've been looking all morning and not a boulder in sight. Oh, looks like my luck is turning. Ready to charge? Tick, tick. Hang on, Ronald. I can see something on top of those boulders. Oh, nonsense. Wait. Oh. Oh. No. Go and get the others. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. My little brother. Straight for the Zandam waterfall. There, there they are. Oh, 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 Well done, Lily. You're a hero. But the egg cracked, and it's all my fault. All eggs have to crack one day, Lily. That's how we find out who's inside. <laughs> it's your little brother. What shall we call him? Dougal. Dougal it is then. Oh. How did you do that, Nelson? It's a magic trick. <laughs> wow! Oh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> wow! I learned all about magic from my friend Kevin. <laughs> was he a magician? No, he was a crocodile, and he was a little bit shy. It was a hot day in Africa. The animals gathered at the waterhole for a cooling drink. Nelson! Oops, sorry. It was so hot that there was not a drop of water left anywhere. <laughs> Doris the duck and Toby the tortoise didn't like the hot weather at all. 
Oh. Hello, Doris. Hello, Toby. Shall we play a game? It's too hot, Kevin. How about going for a swim? There's no water in the river. Oh, yes, of course. I forgot. Let's do something else, then. Kevin so much wanted to please Doris and Toby that he made something up. I can do a magic trick. Can you really, Kevin? Well... You're fibbing, Kevin. No, I'm not. I can do magic tricks. I can prove it. Well, go on, then. Do a magic trick for us now. Please do some magic, Kevin. I bet you can't. I bet I can. I can make a banana disappear. But I haven't got a banana. Sorry. No banana, eh? Wait right here. Here's a banana. Do some magic. What's that over there? Where's the banana gone? That's amazing. Hmm. Do it again, Kevin. <laughs> what a man. Morning, everyone. <laughs> what a man. <laughs> I have it. Oh. Whack! That's amazing, Kevin. Let's put on a magic show for the other animals. I'll be your glamorous assistant. I don't and... think that's a very good idea, Doris. Oh, nonsense, Kevin. You'll wow them. Now, let me see. I'll need a costume, of course, and we'll have to send invitations to the other animals. You can Doris made pink. big plans. Pink. No, maybe blue. No, pink. Whack, whack. Roll up, roll up. See the amazing Kevin the Crocodile make bananas disappear before your very eyes. Well, Kevin, we're waiting. Kevin couldn't do real magic. So he decided to tell the truth. Oh, I can't do magic tricks. Oh. Oh. No, I, I can't do magic tricks now. I'm too hot. But I, I promise to do the biggest and bestest magic trick the world has ever seen. When? Well... This afternoon at the volcano when it's not so hot. He's really good at magic. This is his magic wand, and I'm Madame Doris, his beautiful assistant. But I'm not signing any autographs today. It was a very hot day, but animals had gathered in the volcano from near and far to see Kevin's magic show. Hello, Natalie. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, Georgina. Gosh, it's hot enough to bake a cake in here. Cake? And did somebody say cake? Animals, birds and insects, welcome to the magic show. Yes, it's the reptile you've all been waiting for, the creature who can make bananas disappear. Let's hit it for Kevin the croc o oh, I can't do it. Go on, Kevin. You'll be great. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. something. It's not good news. He's going to cancel the show. Oh, I was so looking forward to it. Uh, the truth is... The truth is, Mr Magic is going to amaze and astound you with the best magic trick in the world. Hooray! Just then, Kevin saw a little rain cloud in the sky. He had an idea. Uh, I'm going to use this magic banana to make a cloud for you. <gasps> what colour should it be? Green. Magic a green cloud. Red. Purple. Make it a purple rain cloud, Kevin. A purple rain cloud it is. Do you want it to be a big cloud or a small cloud? 
a big one. No, small. Make it a small one. OK, OK. I'm going to magic a little purple cloud just for Natalie and Herbert. Ta-da! Look, there it is. <gasps> a little purple cloud just like he said. That's amazing. Oh, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> What about a big round of applause? Let's hear it for Kevin the Croc O'Dial! Thank you and goodbye! Quack! You can't go now. They love you. Do something else. <laughs> no, I'm going to make it look like a fish! It's a fish! Look, he's done it! Hooray! Now, I'm going to make the cloud look like a cake! <gasps> oh, yes! Hooray! Now, I'm going to make it look like Nelson the Elephant! Hooray! Hey, what have you done to my cake? Kevin! Kevin! Magic banana, and I can't do magic tricks at all. What did he say? I don't know. Um, something about magic rain. He didn't say where he hit that cake, did he? What am I going to do? Everyone's getting wet. Oh, don't be silly, Kevin. They love you out there. Look, they do. The animals were all dancing in the rain, and instead of being angry with Kevin, they were all very happy. Look. Real magic. Lucy? Yes, thanks, Boris. I'm okay. But I don't think my cake is. I thought so. It's all broken. There, there. Never mind, Lucy. It was the best cake I'd ever made. Mm. It still tastes yummy. Mm. You're eating my cake? It still tastes good. Try some. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what's inside that counts. That reminds me of the story of Isabel the Flamingo. Please tell us, Georgina. Isabel the Flamingo was the most stylish creature in the whole of Africa. That's right, girls. Put your beaks up, push your feathers out, and smile. Excelente. Now, standing on one leg. Thank you. No, left leg, Mirabel. And hold. Perfecto. If Isabel used a new word, all the animals in Africa would start to use it too. Perfecto. That's a funny word. What does it mean? It means perfect. The best. Tops. You know, like a muddy watermelon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pauline, would you be a dear and go and fish over at the other side of the lane? Okay. Oh. Isabel was so cool that everyone copied everything she did. <laughs> Look out, here comes Isabel. You ask her, Zed. I'm so sorry, Zed, but I can't understand a thing you are saying. Sorry. 
I said, it's a lovely day. Perfecto. <gasps> yes, Zed, it is. Well, do you want to ask me something? We're having a party tonight. Watermelon, mogo chips. And, well, we were wondering if you'd like to come. Well, uh, I'm really busy, but, um, oh, yes, I'll come. Yes! She said yes! Hi, Pauline. Uh, coming to the party tonight? Well, I, uh, well, I've got nothing to wear. Oh, come on, Pauline. We can have a laugh. Oh, all right, then. I'll see you later. Pauline the Pelican wanted to make herself pretty for the party at Water Lily Lake. Hello, Pauline. Annabelle, Mirabelle. I was just getting ready for the party. You are going to the party? With that baggy beak and those dirty feet. Isabel, I was wondering if you could give me uh, a makeover like. Oh. You've got style, you've got grace. Not a feather out of place. I could learn a lot from you. You've got style, you're so chic. From your feet up to your beak. I could learn a lot from you. I see what I can do. Yes, I see what I can do. Okay, Pauline, I give you a flamingo makeover. First, we get rid of all the horrible dust and make you nice and pink. Isabel gave Pauline a luxurious pink mud bath. She taught Pauline how to walk elegantly. <laughs> oh, hello, Pauline. You look nice. It is wonderful to be here. Although, between you and me, all this standing on one leg is really very boring. What are you doing? I'm taking these watermelons to the party. Perfecto. They're a bit heavy. I don't suppose any of you girls could give me a hand. No, it does. I'll give you a hand. Thanks, Pauline. No problem. Are those flowers for the party, Nelson? Yes, Pauline. They'll look lovely if I can keep them all fresh. I'll get you some more water. There you go, Nelson. Now your flowers will look nice and fresh for the party. Thanks, Pauline. That's a real help. Um, I think you've got a little bit of mud on your beak. Oh, never mind. It'll soon wash off. Where do you want it? Over there. Thanks so much for helping me, Pauline. Oh, no trouble at all. We'll soon have this lot moved. What a mess. You can't go to a party looking like that. We help you to look pretty, and this is what you do. Oh, it's so annoying. Party time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ready, girls? Feathers fluffy, big, high. <laughs> Uh, you're here! Great to see you! Come and sit down, next to us. Why are they all talking into a Pauline? She's clumsy and dirty. She has no manners whatsoever. And we flamingos have such a style. But Pauline is kind and helpful and honest. That's why everyone loves her. Everyone wants to talk to Pauline because she has helped to make the party a success. 
when the flamingos understood that true beauty comes from within, they realized that they could learn a lot from Pauline. You're so kind and so sweet. You've got such a useful beak. We could learn a lot from you. We understand you're so grand. Cause you lend a helping hand. We could learn a lot from you. We could learn a lot from you. We could learn a lot from you. I'm so glad in the end that I've got so many friends that I can learn a lot from too. We can learn a lot from you. We can learn a lot from you. Hello, Lucy. Hello, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Hello, Lucy. What's that? It's a torch! Oh, it's very bright. Yes, well, I keep it by my bed. Why do you keep a torch by your bed, Lucy? To look under my bed. Under your bed? Yes, I have to check that there are no monsters under my bed. Monsters under the bed? <laughs> Dear Lucy, I'm sure there are no monsters under your bed. Let me tell you a story. Ah! Jazz the Jaguar thought he was fierce and brave. Jaguars are scared of nothing. There's someone behind you. <laughs> Do you think I'm gonna fall for that old one? No way, Jose. Ah! Caramba! Leopoldo, where did you come from? Hi, Mr. Scaredy Cat. I'm not scared. You surprised me, that's all. <laughs> you think that's scary? Listen to this. Once upon a time, a great big monster with pink spots. With pink spots? Lived in the middle of a dark forest. A forest like the one behind us? Oh. Yes, just like this one. When the monster was hungry, it made a terrible noise. And it ate boulders for its supper. Boulders for supper? Oh, now that's scary. Oh. One day, the monster came out of the forest, opened this great big mouth, and... The monster, it's coming hide! It's Adam, the armadillo. Hi, Taco. Hi, Adam. Did you see the monster in the forest? What monster? <coughs> hmm? Oh, hello, Jazz. <coughs> oh, that's a nasty cough you got there, Jazz. You should drink a nice hot cup of cocoa and go to bed. I'm going to see my friend Annie in the forest. <coughs> The forest is a scary place, my friend. You're too small to be out on your own. A monster might get you. Oh, I'm not scared of monsters. Well, I'd better be off. Annie will be waiting for me. Bye! Is there really a monster in the forest? No, but little Adam doesn't know that. <laughs> We're gonna scare his pants off. <laughs> I have a secret plan. He has a secret plan! Leopoldo, Jazz and Taco decided to go into the darkest, creepiest part of the forest and frighten Adam. Oh, I don't like it here. It's too dark! It, it, it's too quiet! It's too noisy. Quiet! Adam's coming. Right. You don't want to do. Let's go. Taco 
Toto dropped things on Adam to frighten him. But Adam wasn't scared. Hey, these are bongo nuts. Mm, my favourite. Leopoldo made a trail of monster footprints to frighten Adam. But Adam still wasn't scared. Oh. Hey, I wonder who made these footprints. Well, there's only one way to find out. Hello, Leopoldo. Adam. Fancy meeting you here. Yes, well, I... What are you doing on those stilts? I'm falling off them. Oh, ouch. Well, I must be going. My friend Annie will be wondering where I am. Oh, Adam's not scared of anything. He's only a little armadillo. He must be scared of something. I'm gonna scare him out of his armadillo pants. Jazz decided to set a trap for Adam. Little armadillo is walking through the forest. He is chased by the big rock. <laughs> he says, Oh no, a big rock! <gasps> he runs through the forest. Then he sees the cactus monster. He says, Oh no, I am very scared. And he steps back and he falls in the mud and he gets hit by the fruit. Boy, will he be scared! <laughs> <laughs> but Jazz's trap went off too soon. I get chased by a big ouch, a rock, and, and then I slip in the oh in the mud, and then the, ow, the cactus falls on me. Oh, were you scared? Yes. Uh, no. Uh, like I told you before, we're not scared of nothing. Well, now that you're all here, would you like to meet my friend Annie? She should be around here somewhere. I'll go and find her. Well, my friends, if we can't scare Adam, we can scare his little friend. Uh, what's her name? Annie? Yes, we'll scare his friend Annie instead. Did someone mention my name? It's the monster! <laughs> oh, where have Jazz, Leopoldo and Taco gone? Do you think they were scared of little me? <laughs> <laughs> We thought you weren't coming tonight. Yeah, we thought you'd forgotten us. Oh, I'd never do that. That's nice to know. 
Only some animals have terrible memories, you know. Not elephants. No, not elephants. I know an animal with a bad memory, but I forget what type of animal it is. Oh, Boris. I have a story about a forgetful animal. Listen. This is the story of Boris the Bear. Who? Me? You're going to tell a story about me? Yes, but don't worry. It's a very nice story. You told me it yourself. Is it all right if I continue? Mm, mm. It was autumn in the forest where Boris lived. All the animals wanted to eat as much as they could before the cold winter came. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, not there either. Oh. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Hello, Boris. What are you up to? I've lost my honeycomb. I had it this morning, but now I can't find it anywhere. Oh, Boris. Hey, Beverly, did you hear this? Boris has lost his honeycomb. Bad time to lose a honeycomb. Winter's coming. Hey, Randolph, heard the news? What news? It's Boris. He's lost his honeycomb. Oh, bad news, big fella. The animals decided to try and help Boris. I got it. Boris can't remember where he put the honeycomb, but he definitely had it earlier today, so all he has to do is to repeat everything he's done since morning. Beverly, that's a mighty fine idea. Let's get started then. What's the last thing you can remember, Boris? I... Oh, um... You don't have to walk backwards, Boris. Just think backwards. It's easier to remember like this. He had been washing his paws. Hmm. It would look nice inside my cave. Boris, what are you doing? What about the honeycomb? Oh, it's a nice piece of timber. Hey, why are you going that way? We're not going anywhere. It's you. Get off the log, Boris. <laughs> You have to jump, Boris! But Boris didn't like getting wet. Hey! Watch out for my dam! Ooh. Oh no! Ooh. Oops. That dam took ages to build. I'm sure Boris will help you build a new one, babe. Now let's concentrate. We still haven't found Boris's honeycomb. Now what did you do before you were at the river, Boris? Um, oh, yes. What were you doing out here in the middle of nowhere? I can't remember. Uh, I think I was running. Running? But you don't like exercise, Boris. Yes, it's strange, isn't it? What was that noise? Boris's stomach, probably. No, it came from over there. Ah, now I remember why I was running. 
friends began to wonder if they would ever find the missing honeycomb. What did you do before the bison chased you, Boris? Oh, uh, that's easy. I took a nap. I can even remember where. That's the way, big fella. I was lying down on some soft moss. Good, good. Now, this is good, Boris. Now, what else? Such lovely soft moss. And I had my eyes shut. It was so warm and cozy. Morris! What? I don't think we're ever gonna find that honeycomb. I like walking in the mountains. The air is so fresh. I only came up here to play in the snow. You mean? We're not even looking for the honeycomb up here? Oh, Boris! <laughs> you just can't help some animals. I lost my whole crop of mushrooms. <laughs> At least we tried. Doesn't anyone want to play? Boris is shouting to us. He probably wants us to play some silly game in the snow. <laughs> Look out! I was only looking for my honeycomb. Boris and his friends arrived back in the forest. And Boris sat down on his favourite old log. <gasps> What's that under your log, Boris? Huh? My honeycomb! Hmm. You mean... It was here all the time? Right under your nose? How could I forget? Anyone for honey? Boris! <laughs> Hi, everybody! Mmm, popcorn. Yum! That's our favourite snack. Mind if we have some too? No, this is my popcorn. I beg your pardon? That's rather a selfish attitude, Lucy. You don't want to end up like Beverly Beaver, do you? Who's Beverly Beaver, Boris? And how could she possibly be as selfish as Lucy? I'm not selfish. Am I? Just sit down and listen to my story. The forest we lived in was full of beautiful tall fir trees. All the animals loved the trees. Melanie the moose used to scratch her antlers against them when they got really itchy. Ooh. Oh, I love a good tree massage. Randolph the raccoon needed the trees to shade his lush mushroom garden. A hundred and two, a hundred and three, a hundred and four, ha! A hundred and five mushrooms, my best crop ever. And I was particularly fond of fallen trees, because that's where the bees lived. 
And where there's bees, there's honey. Mm, mm, yummy honey! Mm. Of course, Beverly Beaver needed the trees too. She used them to build her dam on the river, a bigger and better one every year. Timber! Hmm. Well, not much bigger or better than last year's model. Oh, looking good, Beverly. Yep, another fine log dam. Amazing how you build them bigger and better year after year. You ain't seen nothing yet. This year, I'm gonna build the biggest, greatest, grandest log dam in the whole wide world. Don't <laughs> 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 trust you, Beverly. Whenever you do anything, you go too far. Let us know when you finished your log palace. <laughs> Huh. I'll show them. Beverly had decided she would build the biggest, greatest, grandest log palace ever. Timber! Timber! But to build her log palace, Beverly had to cut down lots and lots of trees. Randolph was the first to notice that something was not right. Hmm, I say, uh, who's still in my mushroom shade? Then Melanie. Hey, who stole my scratching post? And finally, me. Don't buzz me. I'm not the one who stole your tree. It wasn't fair. Beverly was taking all the trees to build her log palace and leaving us with nothing. This time I'm afraid she's gone too far. She's stealing all the trees. Time to have a word with that busy beaver, I think. A word in your ear, if you please. About the trees, Beverly. Or the lack of trees, if you see what we mean. Sorry, folks. I've no time for chit-chat. My masterpiece is almost finished! What a selfish beaver. She's using up all the trees and just doesn't care. I can't grow mushrooms without them. I can't scratch my antlers without them. I can't find honey without them. Well then, I guess we'll just have to find ourselves another forest to live in. So off we went again to find a new home. Beverly didn't notice that her friends were leaving. She was still too busy chewing down trees. One, maybe two more trees, then it should be done. Yippee! Beverly's palace was almost finished, and that's all that mattered to her. There! That's the biggest, grandest, greatest log palace in the whole wide world! Even if I do say so myself. Okay, everybody. It's ready. Where is everybody? Where are all the trees? At first, Beverly didn't understand why the forest looked so empty and deserted. Oh no, I've done it again. I've gone too far and cut down all the trees. But what about everybody else? Where have they gone? Melanie, where are you? Oh, no! I cut down Melanie's scratching post tree. Boris! You're still here, aren't you? I can't believe it. I took Boris's honey tree. Randolph! Don't 
tell me you've left too. Oh, how could I? I took all the shade from Randolph's garden. No wonder they've all left me. How could I be so selfish? Oh, I wish I was with my friends instead of sitting on this useless pile of logs. Then Beverly got angry with herself and her log palace. Stupid, stupid palace. You're no good to me anymore. Oops. I take it back. Sorry. Ah! Hmm. As she floated down the river, Beverly had lots of time to think about how badly she had treated her friends. <gasps> what brings you here, Beverly? Run out of trees while you were? I hope you don't plan to cut them all down here. We've just found the trees we need. Oh, no. I, I wouldn't dream of it. Never again. I promise. All I want to do is to make things up to you. How about I build a nice log house for you to live in? Thanks, but no thanks. As usual, you'll go too far. And that's a talent that can be put to better use. Especially now that the forest needs replanting. Say no more. I'll plant the biggest, greatest, grandest forest in the whole wide world. Trust you, Beverly. <laughs> <laughs> And so Beverly Beaver learned not to be so selfish. Hi, Lucy! Hi, everybody. Dear Lucy, you don't look very happy. Do you want to tell us what happened? No. No, I mean... Oh, she's so annoying. Who is? Trudy, of course. Trudy? She's your best friend, isn't she? Not anymore. I can't be friends with someone as clumsy and stupid as her. She broke my favourite fountain pen. Oh, see? This is all Trudy's fault. Sorry, Boris. Oh, never mind. Just don't make the same mistake I made, Lucy. What mistake was that? Breaking off a friendship because a friend of mine was clumsy. Of course, Melanie the Moose couldn't help being clumsy. With her great big hooves and great big antlers, accidents were bound to happen. to that beehive. No need, I can reach. 
happy. Ow! Thanks a lot, Melanie. Oh, sorry, Boris. Now Melanie felt really bad. She wanted to be helpful and useful, but all she seemed to do was cause trouble. Oh, if only I wasn't so clumsy. Then she saw some deer frolicking in a meadow, and she marveled at their grace and beauty. Oh, don't they look lovely? I wonder if a moose like me could learn to dance like a deer. Then maybe I won't be so clumsy. Hello! Mind if I join you? Oh, well. Maybe Boris will play with me. Oh, Boris! Look at me! This was one disaster too far. Now we were really fed up with Melanie's clumsiness. My whole harvest gone in an instant. That honey was meant to be for my tea. Those mushrooms could have won me first prize in the annual vegetable growing competition. I just finished building that dam. I said I was sorry. Besides, you know me, I don't mean to be clumsy. But you are clumsy. And silly. And useless. You do nothing but cause trouble. What's the point in being friends with you? No point, I suppose. I am just a nuisance. Poor Melanie. She felt she couldn't do anything but leave us in peace. Who needs friends anyway? I'm better off without them. She climbed to the top of a mountain where she stopped to sit and sulk. At least there are no beehives to knock down up here, or mushrooms to squish, or beaver dams to break. Oh, it is cold and boring and lonely. As Melanie sat and sulked, it suddenly grew very cold and began to snow. Snow! Oh, it's far too cold up here. Melanie decided to go back down to the forest to get away from the snow. But she found it had snowed down there as well. Oh, it's cold here too. The snowy forest was very quiet. Melanie wondered where her friends had gone. Hello? Where is everybody? Melanie, is that you? Mando! Melanie, I'm so glad to hear you. Mando, Beverly, where are you? Over here, Melanie. Stop playing hide and seek. Come out so I can see you. We can't come out, Melanie. We're trapped under the snow. Please, can you help get us out? Now we realized how unfair we'd been to Melanie. We owe you a great big apology, Melanie. 
Will you ever forgive us for calling you useless and silly and clumsy? I already have. And besides, I am clumsy. But the important thing is, we are friends. And no matter what, we should never be so unkind to each other again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. agreed! <laughs> we were all so happy to be friends again. 